down. Um, and I believe with a, we'll, be, we'll emerge stronger, we'll be wider, and we'll have a renewed sense of purpose and togetherness. Um, I'm confident of that, but uh, while we're going through it, it's tough. It's tough for you, it's tough for your families. So uh, stay strong, because we will emerge together. Um, as Fatima has said, you know, I commend your commitment to um, these debates. It's never been more important than now to share and discuss and debate ideas and, and solutions to national and, and global issues. Um, if the COVID pandemic has taught us, it's that all of our lives here in Morocco and around the world are interconnected. Um, we're in this together and we need to tackle it together. Um, I think you've chosen a fascinating top theme um, for tonight's debate and I'm really looking forward to hearing the arguments. Um, clearly, pre-COVID-19, our focus, we, we were all wondering what would come out of the consultation on the new development model. The new development model, you know, which talked about the importance of inclusive growth, social equity, sustainable development, the well of Morocco's citizens, social cohesion. But that was then and this is now. And all of those terms will clearly mean something very different when we emerge. Look at the economic shock of COVID-19 alone. Um, there are discussions of it potentially um, reducing GDP by between 7 and 10 percent. There have been suggestions that Morocco will take three years um, in, in economic terms to return to uh, where it was pre-COVID. So the challenges for the new development model and the sort of baseline new development model post-COVID will be very challenging and very different than when the Commission first met to discuss the um, new development. So this series of debates are a great opportunity to feed in your ideas and your thoughts. Um, on some of our other programs in northern Morocco, under a program called Strengthening Resilience, um, we involved uh, um, youth groups just over a week ago um, in another consultation exercise on the new development model. Um, so I think the richer the debate around the new development model, the richer the outcomes um, will be. So you every success in tonight's debate. I'm gonna stay with you. I'll, I'll be quiet and listen, um, but uh, thank you very, very much and uh, let the debate begin. Thank you very much, um, Tony. Before we start, I'm going to quickly uh, let Rizlan speak a little bit and tell us what she thinks about this whole debate. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Fatim Zahra. And the families are all keeping well and safe and at the current circumstances of the lockdown. Thank you for being part of our agenda. We have set throughout this month to lower YMVs of virtual debates. And thank you for putting efforts together in uh, joining uh, uh, our trial sessions organized to whom I'm, thank I'm thanking them very much in preparing for this today debate. So it's always a pleasure meeting you and happy to see uh, faces from the alumni uh, of YMV. So thank you and good luck. Thank you very much, uh, Rizlan. Um, I would just like to emphasize on what Tony has already said. This motion is extremely interesting and it's extremely important to our context and to us 
as um, community leaders or um, change uh, initiators. And just to remind everybody of the motion um, today, uh, this house believes that the priority of the Moroccan development model must be to protect Morocco from a potential future pandemic. And this is the motion that is going to be debated around. And our debaters here are our alumni and also our uh, peer facilitators, such as Mr. Hamid Tazi and uh, Ms. Khadija Amahal. Um, just before we start, I would like uh, the audience to uh, please keep your mics muted all the time. If you have a question, uh, please type it into the chat box and let us know to which side are you addressing your question. Is it to uh, the government or the opposition? And by the end of the debate, we're going to open the discussion and have the debaters um, answer all of your questions. Also, um, for our audience, please um, send me your mails or just type them down in your uh, in the chat box so we can send you a consent form later on uh, so uh, you can consent that your um, video is uh, being shared on the platforms of the British Council. Um, I think we are all here and uh, we are all ready to start. Um, Prime Minister, are you ready? Yes, of course. Okay, whenever you're ready. Go on. Okay, go ahead. Hello, honorable members of the opposition, fellow members of the government, delightful audience. Good evening. Amidst the circumstances that we find ourselves in today, a global pandemic has succeeded in putting the safety and stability of entire countries at stake, including our own Morocco. Firstly, I would like to wish you all good health in such uneasy times, but in the light of these, we follow pushing the tremendous danger and risk that we ought to acknowledge in the face of the actual or any future pandemics. That being said, we are here today as government to insist that the Moroccan development model ought to have at the top of its priorities measures of protection from any future pandemics. To bring things into context, the 2019 speech on Throne Day was the reason behind the launch of the committee responsible of the Moroccan development model that were supposed to deliver it before June 2020. The 2019 speech of the Kin and People's Revolution considered the new development model as an excellent getaway towards the future. Secondly, I would like to define certain terms such as pandemic. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, a pandemic is a disease in almost all an area of people, animals, or plants. As for the World Health, World Health Organization, a pandemic is a worldwide spread of a new disease. Today, the government will analyze the different aspects of the effects of pandemics of the different sectors existing in Morocco. I will take it into my responsibility on the very first sensitive matter that we see very important, which is the public and the government and its efficiency. And my team will elaborate furthermore on the matters relating to healthcare and economy. First of all, on the 2019 speech, the king drew up the board lines of the model, which will be driving force of inclusive growth, so the blood spoke of a new social contract to be generated and he stressed that in order for this to be established the need to put the well-being of citizens at the center of the new development plan and respond to citizens growing demand of present needs is the priority now we do understand that the main purpose of the black and development model is to provide better measures to Needs to ensure a good future for the upcoming generations and to promote different sectors in order for the economy to know growth and unity Pandemic strikes, the entire future of citizens is put at risk, whether it concerns their health, their education, their jobs and income, and not to forget the impact on the economy. The well-being of citizens, which is the center of attention in Moroccan stated by the king, is threatened by future pandemics. Hence, shifting the priority of the model towards protecting Morocco from future pandemics is in itself a more structured plan that will guarantee the smooth functioning of all Moroccan sectors in the face the pandemic or more circumstances, we can succeed in providing needed abilities to face a pandemic. Priority, we would be establishing by that the measured views as essential even more efficiently. If we take into consideration the COVID-19 example that allows us to study the impacts and counteraction needed in the face of pandemics in order to have a better understanding of the flaws that need to be improved and included in development. 
coronavirus was sudden and abrupt. There could have been no means of prediction because such pandemic has striked hard and spread fast, regardless of my, what may be the reasons behind it. Although our country has shown amazing results and efforts that have been deemed very effective in dealing with the pandemic, it was was prepared for, we do not deny that Moroccan government is in a burst of unity, social solidarity, and public support in the face of the crisis. However, it effectively mitigates the public health and economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The society and cooperation will no longer last. The Moroccan government declared a state of health emergency and began to implement measures This has included closing airports, schools, mosques, cafes, and shops of the creation of an emergency fund raising more than 32.7 billion million dirhams. However, the COVID poses tremendous challenges for the globe, and this holds especially for the states in Middle East and North Africa region, where citizens do not approve of government performance and trust key institutions. A 2009 Arab Barometer survey found that Moroccans do not trust most of the country's political institutions, and the level of satisfaction with the government's performance remains extreme. On the public health front, as, show, as shown in two of IPAs, which is Moroccan Institute for Policy Analysis, recent surveys, trust in the healthcare system is very low. Three quarters of those who surveyed do not trust Moroccan hospitals, highlighting the acute structural problems in the healthcare system. In fact, there is a stark divide between private and public health as well as facilities between urban and rural areas. Most of the country's hospitals and doctors are located in major urban areas, and the only three laboratories with capabilities for COVID-19 are located in Rabaka. But even there, testing capacity is very limited. When we try to understand the situation of the people, the most vulnerable parts of the population which represent the bigger majority of citizens in Morocco, have been affected by the economic crisis because she's bulging informal sector in which most people work and a very weak private sector. In fact, thirds of the workforces are not covered nor by a pension plan, almost half the working population does not currently benefit coverage, and there is no social care system for vulnerable parts of the population. As of 1st of April, more than 700,000 workers have lost their jobs, ladies and gentlemen. The flaws in the Moroccan healthcare system and economical side of our country will be more elaborated further on by the other members of the government. But the image here is very clear. The purpose of the Moroccan plan is to ensure a better future for Moroccans, to build a more developed and model where people are united, where solidarity schools, where the economy, where we have inclusivity. But how can we move forward if we cannot ensure, firstly, the current stability and day-to-day -day lives of our people in the face of abrupt and sudden crises such as pandemics? If we do not put that in our plans to operate to fail, and if we lose the certainty of these pandemics, we will pay the consequences, which will be very terrible. But most of all, the main people who are going to pay these are the people we should put the people at the top of our priorities before anything, because that is what the future of Morocco represents, is the future of its people, and there will be in having me. I yield the floor back to opposition. Thank you very much to the Prime Minister. Um, just quickly, I would like to remind all of the debaters that they can always take um, points of information in the unprotected minutes. So please, if you want to take a, a point of information, just unmute yourself and say point of information loudly and clearly for the speaker to hear you. Um, now we go to the leader of the opposition. Thank you very much, dear Chair Madam. Honorable members of the government, dear members of the opposition, distinguished members of the audience, warm greetings. I hope everyone is doing great. When we talk about the priorities, we're talking about something that should go before the others. As a member of the opposition and all the members of the opposition, we strongly believe that uh, protecting Morocco from future pandemic must not be one of the priorities or a priority of the new development. And we will support our position by providing a set of arguments. Myself as the leader of the opposition, I will provide arguments from education and healthcare that will support before I begin, I would like to refute something said by the leader or by the prime minister. 
you mentioned something or all of your arguments actually supported the fact why we should this for protecting Morocco from a future pandemic must not be one of the priorities of the new development model. It's a lot of responsibilities. It's so much thing that is focused on education and health care. And we cannot actually predict what's going to come in the future. And we cannot actually know what kind of pandemic is going to happen in the future. And when, in fact, when we talk about a new development model or any kind of decision or project, we also talk about the people who implement these projects and who make these decisions. So when we speak about the new development model, we are also talking about the commission that's going to lead this development model, make sure to conduct its follow-up and also evaluate its outcomes to assure that they are on the right track. The commission members are really needing to earn the trust of the population, the Moroccan community, because one of the things that the previous development model did and failed at is assuring this communication and gaining this trust. When decision makers and members of the development model earn this trust, people from the Moroccan community will change and will support them throughout this task. And they will make sure that it's not a decision that, that is, I will take that later. And they will make sure that this is not something that they do themselves, but it's something that is based on concrete facts. And it is something that the population need. The King's speech, as you mentioned, emphasized that the transformation on the economics and lead the country to take another new model and the commission will not be a second government or a parallel format institution rather it is an advisory board and its mission is very specific in time in order in order to prove morocco or any country from future pandemic is like impossible because first of all if we're talking about previous pandemics that other countries faced in the past let's take for example the asian flu that happened in the period between 1956 and 1958 the asian flu was a pandemic outbreak of influenza that originated in china in 1956 and lasted until 1958 in this two-year period asia traveled from chinese province to singapore hong kong and the United States. The estimate of death toll of the Asian flu vary on the source, but on of course the World Health Organization placed the final number two millions deaths. Only and only 60, 69,800 of those are in the U.S. alone. Don't you think that the United States, with its strong economy, did not take into consideration the necessity for preparing to any future pandemic? And look at it right now. The increasing rate of deaths and infections in the United States because of coronavirus or the COVID-19 are increasing. What about Morocco that is still trying and struggling really hard to assure educate a good educational system and a good health care? And the three main tasks of the, uh, the new development models do not, any of them do not include preparing Morocco for any future pandemic, but rather to create fortune, to distribute it in a fair way and to protect human rights and dignity. I really oh, insist. Yes, yes, please. Uh, how to gain people's trust and not uh, um, uh, a result of, uh, of giving the priority to uh, it can be done in, in, with healthcare, especially with the pandemic situation. Exactly. So you, gaining this trust is about providing solution by providing a good educational system. How are we going to have a good health care without having a good educational system? It's thanks to this education that we can raise future generations, doctors and health care people who can actually provide this, this care without any corruption and providing it at a minimal price to people both in urban and in rural areas. And we, we talk about healthcare, not everyone has access to it. So this commission's task is to assure, as I mentioned, one of the main pillars of the new development model, which is distributing these fortunes in a fair way and not assuring a good lifestyle to only the majority or to only few people who are privileged to have good income and to have good social circumstances. What we need to take into consideration right now with all these conditions that we're living nowadays is that the COVID-19 is also a test for our country to 
previous practices that have been implemented and the new development model this commission is on um, the members of this commission are young people who are passionate and who are really eager to make change therefore we need to focus more on education i will take that later on okay go ahead uh is it me or nor uh, okay no, I'm, I'm sorry none of you this is the protective minute Okay, the overcrowded classroom should be a priority for this new development model. The low wages of teachers as well. The government that does not provide sufficient technology and now we're learning by distance should be one of the priorities. And also if we take into consideration healthcare system, we should also ensure that underprivileged people, migrants who come to Morocco and live here should have also a good lifestyle. And everyone in Morocco should feel that they of this country as active citizens no discrimination no violence and also the gender roles must be understood therefore we should also incorporate new elements to the curricula that are being taught for all the previous mentioned arguments and others that opposition the motion thank you very much thank you to the leader of the opposition uh, deputy prime minister the floor is yours First of all, I'd like to ask, can everyone hear me right? Yes, we can hear you fine. Okay, um, thank you so, so much, Connor, for the opposition, dear audience. I would have loved to start by refuting the first um, arguments that was mentioned, but I think all of them are actually included in my speech, so therefore I wouldn't waste my time on that. Uh, today we're in a very difficult situation, a pandemic period that endangers the country and its people. But we believe it will be defeated. Well, that's able to right decisions. However, we believe this gives us another opportunity to seriously rethink our political priorities. Now, which is why Rush Limbach said, why do you think there is a second argument in case the government fails to follow the first one? The first speaker said, how can we tackle something we don't know about? Uh, I would like to take you to a journey from the, to the past, then to the present, then we're going to go to the future. But that will be included in my speech, like I said. In that case, we as the government believe that the priority of the Moroccan development model must be to protect Morocco from a potential future pandemic. As the second speaker, I'll be discussing this from the health aspect to prove our stance and to do so, and finally to the future. In 2015, the International Journal of Infectious Disease discussed the importance of having future plants pandemic. After it has been clear that there is an increase in the frequency occurrence of pandemics in the last few decades, AIDS, 1981, SARS, 2003, influenza, 2007, swine flu, 2009, Ebola, 2014, Zika virus, 2015 to present and the virus. Well, what are we so why do you say we're talking about something we don't know about? We believe it's something we know about, but we have been taking actions all this while. As a result, we believe in order to mitigate human and financial losses, plans have now. And reflecting on how this international crisis has been mismanaged and prepared for the next global pandemic. The ability of any previous plan to contain upcoming pandemics. Everyone today is in panic. Countries are forced to introduce new laws every now and then, which Morocco is not an exception. And I would like to say something, and I would love the audience to help me focus on this word, which is with each pandemic, researchers, public and international organizations have gained a better understanding of the complexity and dynamic. I would love you to focus on the word public health experts. Improving, so well, I would like to take you to the 1918 Spanish outbreak, which is now under study by scientists and experts in order to use salt and contain this COVID 19. This study with the public line defense against an epidemic pandemic, which means we have to prepare the public health um, sector towards any pandemic and epidemic. 
And as I mentioned before, just in 21st century, we've had SARS, influenza, swine flu. So it's, we're not talking about a pandemic of 100 years between them. We're talking about five years, four years, three years. So we're talking about something we know about. Now, let me take you to the present, which is um, Morocco and the health sector specifically, which is expected to be the first against the pandemic. Well, this sector faced a lot of backlashes coming from uh, talking about the development model. And I'll discuss some facts and numbers that will clearly show why the country really needs a future plan for the pandemic. Uh, we'll start with public and private health um, polarization. Public health demands from the generalization of RAMIT 21. According to the results of RAMIT evaluation published in 2017, this generalization has the effect of deterioration in the quality care. And this quality of care is the result of an increased demand for care addressed to public structures without having been accompanied in return by an increased resources. And in 2018, 38% of the Moroccan population did not have medical coverage. And according to the 2019 report on the discussed development model that we're talking about here, one of the six problems that this model will face is the health with heavy handicaps. And what we're talking about handicaps, we're talking about the budget that's allocated to the sector, which is 6% of the state's budget, while the W 10 to 12%. So we're talking about half of the suggested budget supposed to be um, um, suggested for um, the health sector which has led to lack of human resources, weakness of the supply, obviousness of uh, hospital infrastructure. Now, in the Morocco, so the Morocco um, development model in 2017, the king said, we have to admit that our national development model no longer responds to citizens' growing demands and pressing needs. And we're talking about pressing needs, we're talking about education, like you mentioned, and we're talking about health. And health comes first before the education. And as a matter of fact, in 2019, he said, while nominating the committee board, I expect the committee to be totally impartial and objective and to report on facts as they are on the ground, however harsh or painful they may be. And when proposing solutions, which is what we're discussing here, I want it to be daring and innovative. While this innovative, daring and objective solution is prioritizing the protection of Morocco from a potential future pandemic. In management circles, out of order, um, well, um, it is well known in management circles that if one fails to plan, then one should plan to fail. To sum it up, this pandemic is not the end of the globe. Rather, a lesson to learn from and not to repeat the same mistake we've been repeating over these years. And the world sentiment, according to researchers and according to um, um, historians, is that um, this uh, world settlement is in the hands of medical laboratories and is dependent on, on people's awareness. So when we talk about the awareness of the people, which is education and the health, they are both linked. And therefore, the core of time is to give priority to people, their health, and at the expense of money. With this, we state, I strongly believe, in addition to the Prime Minister's point, that the priority of the Moroccan development model is to protect Morocco. Thank you, Deputy Prime pandemic. Minister. Your time is up. Thank you very much. Um, before we go into the Deputy Leader of the Opposition, I would like to quickly remind you that you can type your comments down or your questions down in the chat box, but please let's not have a side debate in the comments section. We will all discuss all the questions and remarks after this debate is done. Now, um, Deputy Leader of the Opposition, the floor is yours. Thank you. I would like to thank the, uh, the government team for such intriguing points about the very intriguing motion as well. Um, they put very valid arguments around where it's just not coming on a very common ground of understanding, if I might say. And allow me to explain that in more into details. Uh, first of all, moving to refuting what the first speaker had said. And now I would quote them exactly for what they have said. They said the entire future of citizens is at risk. Well, the question you should ask what is the future of a citizen? And that is a very basic and very important question you have to ask. What is a future citizen? Is it like a healthy citizen or an educated, employed, stable citizen? Which one is the future of the citizen? Are they going to be healthy but jobless, uneducated? 
or they're just going to be healthy. So obviously a future of a citizen doesn't stand only in the point of them being healthy or having access to medical care, but also for them to be educated, stable, financially understanding what they can do what with their own uh, Oh, yes, please. Uh, how can an unhealthy person uh, get education? Okay, uh, thank you for that point. I'll, I'll quickly answer that. So I, I, I'm very sure that you're talking only about physical health. Let's suppose your healthy citizen has all the means of physical health as possible, but he is unemployed and, and also like in a very struggling financial situation. Wouldn't it produce like more financial... Uh, mentally looking and like concerning physical health to the issue while there is also the mental health of the citizens as well into the concern so it's a balance of both but if we're going to try to compare what stands for the future of a certain citizen it is you know it, the job not in order other points moving on uh, i will refute the second speaker and i want to like i want to clear a very very important misconception here and it is very crucial because the second speaker was talking about the Ebola, the flu, the SARS, but you are mentioning epidemics. You're not mentioning pandemics. And there is a very vast difference between a pandemic and an epidemic. So the P stands for passport. Pandemic means it's very global and it's all the countries, but epidemic, it's rather a regional or for a certain country. So the flu, the Ebola, were just diseases that were, were in certain regions. The last epi um, pandemic that we had was in the 1889s, which was the flu uh, pandemic. But you mentioned only epidemics, and the motion is talking about that the development model should be concerned about protecting Morocco from future pandemics. So pandemics are very rare to occur and to you know, put such... Um, huge budget that is meant for a lot of sides only to protect yourselves from something that you do not know when will it strike or what any time or what kind of pandemic are you going to suffer from sounds quite inconvenient for me but if you will allow me to elaborate if the means for you to protect yourself from a future and have almost nothing to do with a uh, a development model rather it has every with however many managing the situation inside the country itself. Because we can notice that there are very well countries that are suffering and getting damaged from the pandemic itself, rather than there are, there are countries that have good governmental management. And I'll dive into more details when it comes to how can you manage a pandemic before it becomes uh, an epidemic before it becomes a pandemic, because it all starts with an epidemic. So it starts with non-pharmaceutical interventions. So this just means that whenever an area has an outbreak, which is the very, very first stage of a uh, epidemic, you contain the outbreak. That's what the governments have to do. They have to contain the outbreak, then they have to move on in case things are getting out of hand. They have to move on to early travel and travel restrictions, then to border control. And then we reach the final stage, which is quarantine and confinement. And then the load gets very hard on the uh, medical, uh, uh, on the health industries and the uh, health industry. Uh, uh, so, so that, Almost all of these that I mentioned right now have nothing to do with the development model rather than just the health care system based. Or, yeah, please, uh, your point of information. Okay, I would like to ask you when we're talking about having jobless and uneducated people. Well, we prefer life in the economy over life of the people. Don't you think the economy will grow even after the pandemic? I, these people did not be brought back to life. Uh, I, I don't quite get your point because people die every day with huge numbers, with very far more uh, problems that we have to deal with, such as hunger, uh, such as poor, uh, poor health, such as uh, uneducated people as well that do not know. Actually, I'll give you an example. Answering the question specifically, the U.S., they have very exclusive access to education. And now recently, we see, we've seen a lot of people coming up with riots or like protesting holding you know placards saying coronavirus is fake now would you consider that an educated person or an uneducated person saying that a global pandemic uh, is fake so this problem information. Question, uh, I, I, should, I should probably proceed more because i took three point of informations but to finalize my point what makes a good devil you have to ask yourself 
what makes a very good development model. So there are three main bases that you have to judge yourself if you have a good development model or not. The minimum wage of every individual citizen that you have, the amount of uh, healthcare access that that individual has as well, and how many people graduate from high school compared to the number of people that start school. So these three bases will give you if the country has a good development model or not. But rather if you're gonna focus a very huge budget on such a country such as Morocco that needs this kind of finances, that needs this kind of attention to very crucial pillars of the country itself, you are putting the country for more danger than you're actually protecting it from future pandemic because the country is going to collapse because there is no education. There's the unemployment rate rates are very high. There is the very exclusive health care that people are, are not like getting the attention that they deserve from very normal day-to-day -day procedures such as surgeries, fever, flu, rather than you're talking and speaking about a global Pandemic. So also just please keep in note that a pandemic is not an epidemic and for an epidemic to become a pandemic There are so many stages so many phases that it has to go through. Thank you And I yield the floor back to the deputy leader. Thank you to our deputy leader of the opposition Next is our member of the government. Please the floor is yours uh, Thank you for them. Hello everyone my salutation to the audience, my friends, and the opposition. My team clearly explained why Moroccan development model be to protect Morocco from potential future pandemic. We are in this moment living in one of the, the biggest crises that ever faces our, our country. The Moroccan government is capitalizing a burst of unity and the uh, social society and public support in the face of crisis. However, it fails to effectively mitigate health and economic impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. The spirit of solidarity and cooperation would not last long. I want to say to the second uh, speaker of the uh, opposition that uh, don't you think that if Morocco uh, we're prepared to protect uh, to protect our uh, country from the future pandemics. It will be effective, uh, like more effectively face all of this. Even if it's uh, education and uh, health system, it will not be like uh, uh, in a good uh, situation if it's faced with a pandemic and certain pandemic, uh, uh, especially like. Uh, this one we live in. Um, for saying that uh, that's why to protect Morocco from potential future pandemics, uh, Morocco with all its competence from uh, legislative economic institutions must learn from this pandemic that it is undergoing. We clearly see the development level failing to address the consequences of this pandemic. Morocco today has a tree, uh, has a treatment uh, has a treatment uh, economy and the state of ambulance and do not forget to remind you that my uh, that uh, any development model is not based on dealing with pandemics uh, in the end of, in the end of the day it will fail at any moment due to a potential future pandemics and it's very knowing that the country uh, development model was uh, uh, come by uh, the highest uh, authority in the country to failure it was uh, confirmed to us uh, immediately after the, the spread of corona uh, epidemic within the state and closed air factories has resulted in more than uh, seven, seven, 700,000 workers who lost their jobs due to the uh, repercussions of this pandemic and what the places developed all the uh, formal to this. So we have to be realistic in the protecting Morocco from possible future pandemics and that sh uh, pandemics should uh, become a priority. I think I, think I would say uh, thanks so much for listening and I'm leaving the floor to the next uh, speaker.
Thank you to the member of the government, member of the opposition. Whenever you're ready. Yes, I'm ready. Go on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the members of the opposition, the members of the government, fathers and all the all, uh, good day. So uh, we've been discussing uh, uh, a controversial topic nowadays, which uh, which treats the importance of, uh, of prioritizing the pandemic in uh, in modern development and precisely in modern development of Morocco. But uh, first, I uh, I have to say it's our position as an opposition team, and uh, seeing that we are non-partisans for 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 the motion, of course, we shall say that no, we shouldn't prioritize the pandemic. We should prioritize it in the in the fundamental purpose of of having a, a will will fed will be in a country and will be in uh, will be in of the people. So uh, one. Uh, one question said by Mr. The Deputy Minister of the Opposition, the Deputy Member of the Opposition, who said, what are uh, the needs of people? And of course, uh, I shall agree with, with joining him by another rhetoric question, ladies and gentlemen, which is, on which logical basis shall we prioritize unproductable incidents than prioritizing the real fundamental pillars? Yes, go ahead. Do you think that a dead person would have any sort of needs? Unfortunately, uh, your, your point of view, your point of view seems to be uh, a circular, circular argument since you didn't hear it, unfortunately. Thank you very much. Zanjat and should be first protected by the model of development by giving more expanded tools on the health care, not on the pandemics. So, first of all, I shall say that uh, the, first, uh, the first member of the government, Mr. the Prime Minister, has tackled uh, only uh, the well-being of, of a country, but without seeing how, how prioritizing the pandemic can contribute in the well-being of a uh, of set of people that's equal to 40 million people. That is first. Information. Second, rejected. Second, second, ladies and gentlemen, uh, unfortunately, they didn't, they didn't uh, tackle uh, the, let's say, any concrete example in the world happened to ties uh, a pandemic than uh, uh, who taught in the real uh, importance for most sectors. So uh, we have to 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 stress on uh, something that is that was uh, stated by Sir the deputy of uh, the opposition, who said that help. Healthcare, yes. Don't you think that providing the extreme measures is integrally providing the day-to-day -day measures that need that are needed? Mm -hmm. uh, it, which means, on which basis? This is not a discussion. I'm sorry. Continue. So, thank you very, thank you very much. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, if we contemplate in the modern development, and it's responsible. And the people are responsible for, for our model development. The 35 people we have, the majority of them, or let's say 20, uh, from 23 to 25 people, are experts in economy, industry, in education, and other fields. But we have another special class. We have uh, six of uh, six members of, of this of this modern development appointed by the king from outside, which represent the Moroccan diaspora and who are specialized in technology and artificial intelligence. So if we can template in the crude number, or let's say the majority number of the members are experts in economy, artificial intelligence, technology, finance, uh, agriculture, uh, food and pharmaceutical industry. So, Points of information. 
rejects it. So, and we have another special committee with, uh, who will be, uh, which will be in charge of uh, developing uh, healthcare, education, and uh, all the, uh, the unproductive sectors, ladies and gentlemen. So, ladies and gentlemen, prioritizing pandemic, if you, if we want to, according to political study, if we want to create a pandemic and create a crisis first, we have, we should have a crisis commission or crisis council, which is, of course, headed by Mr. Alami here in Morocco. So, crisis communicate and crisis communicators, ladies and gentlemen. Crisis communication should be headed, of course, by statesmen, chairmen, and experts of, of, uh, of technical biology, microbiology, and virology, who can, uh, with, uh, with whom we can consult, of course, and with whom we can uh, know uh, the status of the virus and its rifle, right, uh, rampant white screen. So on this basis, ladies and gentlemen, we can give an example. The United States of America and its crisis commission and crisis committee and crisis communicated is headed by Mr. Vauci, who is the head of the Department of Virology in the University of Columbia. So, ladies and gentlemen, in model of development, we have to focus on healthcare, of course, on education and within the educational frame we can spend more expenditures more expenditures on the following departments in medicine which are microbiology technical biology and virology who uh, accidentally treats uh, treats the pandemics thank you to our uh, of crisis thank you very much Thank you. Uh, now we go into the government whip. Government whip, are you ready? Yes, thank you, dear uh, moderator, uh, dear audience, uh, dear opposition, dear government, and uh, dear uh, British Council officials, I salute you all. Uh, I would like to start by an, an example, a quick example. Let's say that uh, there is a piece of candy that you really, really, really want. And uh, it is out of your reach. Between you and the piece of candy, there is a monster. And how can you, how can you reach for that piece of candy if you don't fight the monster first? So ladies and gentlemen, our motion is clearly stating that the priority of our uh, people uh, through the development model should be the uh, fighting of the uh, future pandemic, but also uh, to uh, ensure a good health system for all Moroccans. And let me tell you why. As my uh, fellow uh, members of the government previously stated, uh, and as I explained to you with my uh, uh, quick example uh, at the beginning of my speech, uh, we should have priorities in life. Of course, uh, education is a great goal. Of course, uh, economy also is a great goal, but we should take baby steps towards uh, the future. Uh, we should uh, have strategic thinking. We should uh, build a strategy and be smart and go uh, step by step. As uh, the uh, my fellow um, Amendment uh, stated, the uh, private and public health care system in Morocco is really, really in a bad sh shape. And it is undeniable the, uh, the members of the opposition couldn't uh, react to that specific point. And also, uh, uh, they mentioned uh, throughout, uh, through um, uh, Khadija's speech, the uh, chief of uh, opposition, that um, People should adjust its, uh, their approach and targets in light of the pandemic. And this is really uh, an important uh, 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 thing to, to mention because, yes, uh, we should really ad adapt. We should really um, uh, move forward uh, to the future. Or, or, 
culture. The uh, history is the memory of the world, and we can't just go over the fact that the, this global pandemic has caused many, many uh, severe um, economic and 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 uh, uh, human uh, losses to uh, all humanity and uh, to Morocco as well. So. As for uh, uh, our dear uh, deputy uh, uh, leader of the opposition, he stated that there is a difference between pandemic and epidemic. That's not relevant for me. Why? Because uh, when, when we are building a health system, uh, we are not building a specific, uh, a specific uh, like uh, tools to fight this this uh, this disease or, or that other disease we are doing a global uh, action towards improving the, the health the healthcare system and it is undeniable ladies and gents that healthcare is one of the most important things that we have to deal with as a nation and as a uh, uh, and uh, throughout uh, through the uh, model of uh, of development, uh, uh, preferably. So when 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 uh, the deputy leader of the opposition also talked about uh, the difference between uh, uh, like um, uneducated and and uh, and uh, educated people, and he talked about like how in America people. Uh, uh, brag about uh, the coronavirus being fake and all, uh, you should know that uh, there is a big difference between being educated and being aware. Because uh, raising awareness does not, um, uh, does not target only the uneducated people. We can be educated, but we still need to be aware of some issues that we have in our country. I will take that. Uh, uh, take it for example, Morocco, and as my personal experience as well, I've studied in my religious studies what is a pandemic and an epidemic and how to protect yourself from it. And we've had advices from very popular people in history as well on how does it spread. Do you think that is not considered indication since it already exists in our educational your system? Time for the POI is up. Okay, I hear your point. But uh, the fact is that... Uh, Mentioning the difference between an epidemic and a pandemic is not, it's just not relevant because we are talking about a global development model. We are not talking about specific medical details. We are talking about fighting uh, diseases. And as for the pandemic is concerned, it, can, it can't be fought if we don't have uh, a good uh, health system already in place for other diseases. And uh, this is this is a fact. This is a fact. And the difference between pandemic and and epidemic is just not relevant. Now moving on uh, to to my uh, to my other points, I will take that later. I just uh, would like would love to emphasize on uh, what uh, the deputy uh, prime minister uh, of our team, the government team, uh, said. Uh, diseases are not that uncommon. We have diseases spreading uh, like uh, in, uh, every three or four or five years. And this is a very, very important uh, uh, fact. And uh, we should raise awareness. We should ra raise awareness about uh, this kind of, 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 of things because health is a priority. Want of information? Should... Sure. Not in order. This is the protected minute. Thank you. Yes. So just to conclude, uh, we should we should um, we should seek sustained inclusive growth. We should seek citizen uh, well-being, and citizen well-being is uh, uh, composed. It's it's really uh, about uh, health, and then it can be about education and economy and all sorts of things. Thank you. Thank you, our government whip. Now, last but not least, the opposition whip, whenever you're ready. Thank you. Am I being heard? Yes, you are. Go on. Thank you. Um, uh, hello, everyone, um, British Council staff, members of the government, and my fellow teammates of the opposition. Today's motion is to very important 
are talking about the Moroccan development model. And then we're talking globally about the pandemic, which every country is struggling with. I would like to rebound points that show the weakness of the position of the proposition team. And we saw with the first speaker who said, who mentioned the public trust, how the plan is threatened by the MIC and how the purpose of the plan is a brighter future in all fields. Exactly, and I'm quoting in all fields, which proves that Morocco does not have to prioritize a field over another just because of the pandemic, because we are sure and we are optimistic that we're gonna pass that, but what else, what is gonna happen after that? And then talking about how overcoming the pandemic relies on the collaboration of the health sector workers, but guess what? The proposition team forgot a very important element in how we can overcome the pandemic, which is the people. And here we're gonna work, and here we're gonna tackle the awareness and how it is very important to work on people's education. Or the third points speaker of rejected. The third speaker has mentioned how people are losing their job, how people are financially struggling, struggling uh, during this crisis. And the, uh, the last speaker of the proposition said that uh, there is no difference between an epidemic and a pandemic. So there is no difference between uh, something and something that is touching you. Then why would you be wasting a lot of money, wasting a lot of resources to fight something that is not there? Points of information? Yes. I didn't say that uh, epidemics and pandemics were the same, but I said that the difference is not uh, relevant in our case. Thank you. Welcome. Exactly, this is what I just said. If it's not relevant in this case, we're talking about the Moroccan development level uh, model. And how can you talk about, how can you say that the difference is not relevant if we're, uh, you're not going to use it to treat an epidemic, since you're not going to use it to treat an epidemic? On there are some points that we need to clarify, and we're gonna start. I will. I'm sorry about what I will have to disappoint, Mr. Tony, because this sense of uh, uh, education is not working in Morocco, not in my case, and I'm not saying in a sarcastic, in any sarcastic tone, but actually, Casablanca people are not people everywhere in Morocco. There are people who are do not have access to internet. There are people who do not have mobile phones. There are people who do not have laptops. So overcoming this situation with distance education is just not working. And then when you said, when the proposition team said that people are ignorant and do not trust the institution, I would like to answer uh, the first speaker's question about does the dead person have any needs? My question to you is, would you rather have a completely hospital or where people who are just going to be staying at home and avoiding all the troubles who are going to be collaborating with, uh, with the government? So we see that the people, the, the very important point here is that people are lacking the trust in the government. Why is that? Because they have financial issues, because they are struggling economically. What else did this pandemic show us? The fact that people are That's struggling psychologically as well. Agreed? Okay, well, we're talking about future. We're talking about future. We're talking about having a plan. So don't you think it's adding prioritizing Moroccan, uh, prioritizing how to protect Moroccans from this future pandemic should be a case for the model? Thank you. We're working on a plan exactly. This is why we are tackling what is not working now so that the plan can tackle it. See that health, yes, it is very important, but sector we need uh we need balance we don't need to focus just on one field otherwise we wouldn't call it a development model we could just call it a health plan for example or health vision um, as it has been mentioned by uh, my fellow teammates in the proposition prioritizing is seeing what is important what we should work on and we see that people's trust is very important and to earn people's trust we need to work on on all the sectors from the uh, development model. Let me just mention the development models indicators are the infrastructure, education, the health. The development axes are employment, economy, and social. The, uh, this pandemic show us for the social rights, we see that women are struggling because they're suffering with violence inside their houses. 
uh, kids are not, uh, do not have the right education. So we see that we need to work on many other areas just as much as we need to work on, it, on health, on the health sector. Thus, ladies and gentlemen, we're proving that the motion stating that Moroccan development plan should prioritize the health sector to face a pandemic in the future is meaningless since we don't need these resources where we can invest them somewhere else. Accorded? Uh, do you think prioritizing something is strictly uh, dealing with it? Don't you think that prioritizing something means that we have a priority, a first priority, and then we can deal with the other problems? Thank you. Opposition with, are you here? Exactly. We said that prioritizing is finance. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So exactly, this is what we're saying. Prioritizing is defining what you need to work on. For you, you said that you should just work on the health sector and give it all. Well, what we are saying is that this pandemic is not lasting. We should learn from it. And what we have learned is that we should work on all the fields and uh, uh, keep them going in, in, in balance uh, so that Morocco can have the brighter future that the proposition is promising the Moroccan people. Thank you. Back to the moderator. Thank you very much, Opposition Whip. And with the last speech of the Opposition Whip, now we have come to the end of our debate. This has been an extremely interesting debate. I myself have, have really enjoyed it and I'm sure everybody enjoyed it too. Um, we have quite a lot of questions in here. Um, I think we are going to try to go over them quickly because we have so many and I know that everybody wants to talk about uh, so many things that were brought up during the speeches of the debaters. Um, so I'm going to go uh, one question at a time and have either the opposition or the government um, add their input or their answer to the question. Uh, the very first question is for the government and um, it says, is the government saying that the sole focus of the new development model should be health? And also, how does the government plan to protect Morocco against future pandemics? Can any country be protected against a global pandemic? Would any member of the government like to answer this question? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Go on. Okay. Okay, um, for the first question, which is, are we saying it's the sole focus? Well, we're not saying it's the sole focus. We're talking about prioritizing. We believe all the pro all the sectors that's important. We're talking about prioritizing. This happened the hand before. Like I mentioned before, we're talking about management circles. If you don't have, if you don't, uh, if you fail to plan, then you're planning to fail. So we failed once, so that we should be prepared so we don't fail the second time. And like the African proverb says, like a knife shot to you at the same time. And how does the government plan to protect Morocco? Well, according to the 2015 study that I mentioned, they mentioned way before COVID, like two um, suggestions and plans to tackle pandemic. And they said public health emergence and global pandemic funding. Now look at us in 2020. What are we doing? Both are the things that we are working on right now. So don't you think that was a plan in the past? If we had, if we had those plans, then we wouldn't face a larger, like a huge problem that we're facing right now. I think. Ashraf, do you plan on saying anything? I saw you raise your hand. No. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Um. Can you hear me? I think yes. I have internet issues. All right, uh, w w like what Ms. Mr. Ahmed said, he literally said that increasing the capacity of healthcare and stuff. So you're just basically saying that you want to stack more patients in the same place more. That is that is the way you're going to protect yourself from a, a global pandemic. Like we're, when we're talking about protection, we're talking about two things, preventative methods and like uh, uh, operative measures. So what are the preventative measures you're talking about? How can you possibly protect yourself from a global pandemic? And how are you going deal to deal with it? If you're going to tell me increasing the health, uh, like health sector's capacity, you're just 
talk to patients in the same place and giving them time to be cured. So what are you talking about exactly? Uh, she can answer or? Uh, of course, go ahead. Okay, well, the first thing every country asked was public health emergence. And when we talk about health sector, we're not talking about just hospitals or doctors treating people. We're talking about the researches also. So the, these budgets, if they are allocated in this sector, then more researches will be done and we can find vaccines and even we can talk about the emergencies and the precautions that we can take so it doesn't spread, I think. All right, thank you. Um, I would just like to inform the audience that they can also um, interfere and um, let us know about their inputs. I have here um, Maryam. Maryam, do you want to say anything? Maryam has her. Okay, go on. Uh, I didn't actually raise my hand, but um, since I'm given the opportunity to uh, interfere. Okay, uh, I would just okay. like to know the full name. It's Maryam Utakhrof. She has her. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Sorry. I believe she's not here, maybe. Okay, uh, Hamid has her, has, has his hand held high. Do you want to? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to answer the question, which was uh, the, uh, if the government thinks that uh, the sole purpose of the uh, models should be healthcare. Uh, I, would, I will repeat my last point of information. The, mo the motion clearly states that it should be a priority, and this is our, our stance. Uh, a priority doesn't mean that it, it would be the only thing that we are going to deal with it is just going to be the first thing we deal with. That's it. That is true. Thank you, uh, Hamid. Malak is uh, maybe trying to speak. Malak, are you here? Okay. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go on. Thank you. Well, um, first of all, I just want to congrats both sides of the for, for the summarizing debate. It was quite delightful to be part of this. Moving on, um, I should say that I am biased to the opposition team. Why? Because basically we cannot prioritize one sector on the other. All sectors are connected. And honestly, we cannot not consider the fact that if we had a strong educational system with a lower ignorance rate, if our citizens had insured jobs and a higher GPD, this global virus wouldn't have spread this terribly. Why? Well, because A, people would have been more aware and able to protect themselves and families earlier, and B, people wouldn't have been losing their jobs and freaking out over um, how to ensure food to their kids. And I'm talking about a huge fragment of the society here. Development models should have, shouldn't be dedicated to a virus outbreak that happens once in a century, but to a structural issues that have been threatening the SR of our country since forever. The healthcare workers base their services on what they've learned throughout their academic curricular, which brings us back to floor zero, the educational system, public infrastructures, and social equities and human rights are the priority of this uh, development model. And thank you. Thank you, Malek. I have here a question that kind of joins what you just talked about, the point of being of the pandemic being periodic. Um, this question is for the government and it says, how can we protect ourselves from something that's totally unpredictable and happens every hundred years? Yes, Ahmed, go on. The question is so funny to me because the person said unpredictable and said in 100 years. What prediction are you talking about? I don't really understand. I really like the question, we can elaborate on it so we can understand. Talking about unpredictable, well, we don't know what's going to happen. Or you're talking about the years of it happening. Well, this is, this is actually a logical fallacy. I agree with you on that. <laughs> the question was uh, given by Mohamed Kareesh, if he's here, and he wants to elaborate, maybe. Kareesh, are you still here? Okay, uh, can I talk? Yes. Uh, okay, basically, I'm, I'm a little sick, but I'm going to do it anyway. So when I talked about unpredictability, I talked about the severity of the disease because they are not equal. They do not have the same reproductive rate. And that's what, uh, that was my point. 
and the fact that it happens uh, every one 100 years was just uh, me saying that, that this is the logical sequence of a pandemic that happened overnight. Yeah, I hope up the, the point. Your point is clear, I believe. Um, yes, Hussam. Um, I would want to just express how um, how I see this uh, whole thing because um, you know this uh, the origin of this uh, this spread of this pandemic comes from a how can I say uh, our trust to the scientists like for to, to science because if if we did if we just took our guards and uh, we didn't let our guards down and uh, took every day our precautions and stuff, we wouldn't arrive at this point. But as we see, like it, every year we say, we say that they've discovered this, the treatments for this disease. They discovered this and that. We can help this and this. Yeah, we, just, we just believe that, wow, science is, so, science is going so, so good and scientists are doing their jobs. But when we arrive at a point, we just, we just uh, believe that we are in, uh, we trust something that shouldn't be trusted actually. Uh, just for instance, uh, here we are now, just like two months ago, I was in a foreign country and in this country, there was the first, there was the first case of uh, the, the, co the coronavirus. And bizarrely, no one else seemed to give uh, some importance to it. And uh, people believe that this was like a normal, no, normal disease or something like that. They, they just said, okay, the problem would be solved in two days, three days. People said next week. After that, they said next month. Now we're saying in, in five years, you know. Uh, so I think this, we cannot predict this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this whole situation. There is this, this, um, how can I say? I I'm, sorry, even... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to quickly interrupt, but if you okay. can't really predict something, how can you take your precautions against it? Because you're saying, well, we trusted science way too much and we didn't take our precautions and now here we are. But now you're saying um, this is unpredictable. So, Yeah, there, I'm coming to my point. There, there is the scientist who, uh, like in the 20th century, is that all the catastrophes, the natural catastrophes, the, those diseases, those wars, those, like everything that happens in this world, like it's, it serves to help, it serves to, to build a world, a, a, a much more better world. So I think that this disease will give, this will give us the lesson of that we should develop more things. And um, as we can see now, in, by using mission, we can see that we communicate between each other, like uh, wirelessly, without going to, without having to, to go, for instance, to the British Council. As I, I'm a former student of the British Council as well, and um, we don't have to go to school and stuff. We can see that there is a little bit of development. So we can say that this pandemic does not only give us uh, a bad bad things and the um, bad sides it, mm -hmm. it as well gives us some 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 good points to do we work on ourselves on our mental health we can see that how for, how far can can we go because you know we're being we're i'm being... sorry can i interrupt go ahead uh, i'm sorry Kautar, but i have here people who have um their hands held high from way before i would i would like to give um the floor to Senad, maybe he wants to say something. Oh, yes. Um, wait, let me uh, turn on my camera. Can you hear me first? Yes, we can. We can hear you. Okay, that's perfect. Um, so, hello, uh, everyone. I would like to uh, congratulate you for uh, the, the, the very good debate. And concerning my uh, opinion and my, uh, my thoughts about this topic, I um, think I'm going to join the opposition team. Because um, protecting Morocco from a potential future pandemic is honestly a delusional priority. The, de the development model prioritizes all sectors, including education, justice, employment, transportation, health, industry, governance, democracy, and international relations. The Moroccan government cannot gamble all its cards 
on a might or might not happen pandemic. And there could be no government willing to utopically invest in, of course, a noble objective, but an unrealistic one. I mean, um, I, I, I noticed that one of the, uh, the debaters uh, brought up the, uh, the example of Spain during the, the, the beginning of the 20th century. And did actually Spain invest anything in, into fighting the, 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 the eventual future pandemics? And will the UK also, let's take it for example, approve such conditioned and risky approach after these circumstances? circumstances? Especially that its economy was flatlining way before the pandemic. European and American stock markets collapsing and show no sign of a soon recovery, if not in years. I mean, how valuable is health if it's, in, if it's an unconstant state? Because damaged economies and states who supposedly prioritize living in fear and in everlasting vigilance to be protected from pandemics cannot bid on health to reverse the commercial deficit, for example. Humanity's biggest strength and weakness is that it plays only when the risk is diversifiable and only when there is certainty on the playground. Bidding on fighting pandemics rather than recovering from a global health crisis and try to improve the overall situation of the country, starting with education, can be nothing but an unrealistic, paranoid and subjective approach. The strength of a country is not in its medical facilities and Europe right, right now sides along with me on this example. The priority is the future and to exist during that future, culturally, intellectually, economically, and financially, not just demographically. Now, this was my opinion about the whole situ situation. Um, uh, I would like to, to maybe uh, hear uh, if others uh, join me or maybe they really disagree with me. Thank you, Fatim Zara, for this, uh, for this uh, chance. Thank you. Thank you, Sanad. I'm trying to restrain myself from commenting because so many people here want to comment. Kautar, you're next in line. Um, do you want to say something? You're still muted. Yeah, thank you. Actually, I just, uh, in my intervention, I plan to give an example and I forgot when I talked about how um, fighting ignorance first is important. We all know the example of Mina Ilma, a very ignorant, like she has nothing to do with science, she has nothing to do with education, coming um, on a platform where she has millions of people following her, telling people that the coronavirus does not exist. Do you think that fighting this kind of people is not a priority to overcome the pandemic? This was, um, this was a very point that I, I, I thought I had to add, and thank you. Thank you, Qatar. Uh, Hamid is next in line. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I would just like to emphasize on the fact that, um, as previously stated, uh, we we didn't like uh, fighting the the pandemic uh, uh, is not about a lack of uh, education. Like uh, the problem with the, with the fighting epidemic is not about the lack of education. It's about uh, it's about sorry the lack of awareness, and this awareness uh, and this lack of awareness was also uh, present in uh, societies such as the U USA. The USA have a very good educational system, and they went uh, to the streets and they uh, said that uh, the corona is fake and they are educated people, but they are not aware. And awareness is not only education's uh, job. Yes, education can spread awareness, but they are the media and, uh, and, all, and, all, and, and all other, other like uh, civil society um, uh, uh, activities. So that, that's for the education part. And as I told you in my speech, like for example, if education or economy is, is this piece of candy, that we dearly want to 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 have, we should fight the man the monster that is keeping us from having it, and we can't be a strong country if we don't have people, if we if the people die, we can't have a strong economy and we can't have a, a strong education if the, the people are dying. So that's my point. And as for uh, Sanad's uh, Sanad's uh, intervention, I believe. Uh, he said that uh, he, he is with the, with the uh, with the opposition uh, uh, team, and that he is uh, he thinks that um, the the best people in the world are the ones with the, the strongest economy and stuff. Uh, this is not a fact. This is 
absolutely wrong. The best people, the best countries in the world are, are the ones that care for their people. And it's, and it's uh, about caring. And if we don't care about our health, we, 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 are, we are really uh, not caring about the people. And uh, to care about the people, we need a good social system and a good social a care system, social security system, health care. Uh, and, and countries like, uh, for example, um, Norway or, or, or even uh, the UK or even uh, uh, countries that really have strong, uh, or even China, uh, countries that, are, uh, that have really strong health care systems are the ones that uh, really drive their people toward, towards excellence and greatness. And, and this is all about seeking excellence. And if we are not healthy, we can't achieve economic or, 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 politic or, or uh, political or, or any sort of, of uh, improvement. That's my point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hamid. I have here a very interesting que question that joins what you just uh, talked about. The question says, will the government settle for having healthy citizens who may be poor and uneducated? And how will this achieve the goals of social equity and inclusive growth? And maybe we can talk about another question that um, goes in the same sense. It says, how can we staff the healthcare system without education? How can we equip hospitals without a vibrant economy? And how can we fund equitable access to the health system without a commitment to social protection? I think this question is very brilliant. Yes, yeah, sure. Can I, can I answer it? Um, I'm sorry, can we just give the floor to somebody else because there are people who would like to talk. Sure. Ahmed, do you sure. want to know? Yeah, first of all, I'd like to say when we talk about pandemic, this thing we're talking about is the health. And there is a mistake, um, I'm not gonna say we were mistaken, Called for. The first speaker mentioned we're going to uh, treat this from the health, education, and economy. And, and the opposition ignored the education and economy, and we are all discussing about the health. So here we understand that health, um, education and economy are important, but how can we protect them through this education and economy? Who's going to tell you that this is how this um, virus transfers? Like how does it go from one person to the other? If we don't actually um, fund and improve the health sector, which I said includes researchers and also um, universities, for example, how can we actually um, you know, talk about the pandemic without talking about the health sector? It's not possible. And something um, Senate said about using all its budgets. Well, that's the answer I give to Mr. Riley's question, which was that, we're not talking about giving it being the sole focus, but we're just talking about prioritizing. And we'll give you the, um, the idea of public health emergence. For example, if we had the plan before about global pandemic funding, like the King announced, if such um, funding was there before, and now not economic problem, even the education will be really good. If we had plans, then we'll be able to tackle anything coming. So that's what we think. And it's not just stuff you can understand. It's all about economy also, about education. But we believe the first thing we talk about when we mention pandemic is health. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, uh, was there any? Yes. Can you... Hello. Are Hello. You... Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. So, uh, yes, thank you very much for opening the discussion. Uh, it's a uh, yes, compelled stream, and that's really to discuss and decipher all the ideas and sub ideas. I want to do on on uh, awareness, uh, the point of awareness set by Mr. Hamitazi, and uh, the point of United States of America, and I shall agree on the point that yes well educated people doesn't mean uh, being aware of the situation but i should say we get 70 percent of our awareness is sprung from the education which the school and the educational system and the schooling system is responsible for this is the first point and don't you think that prioritizing a pandemic with huge Crude sums of money uh, uh, hired by a, a pandemic 
can can take maybe can make uh, of of uh, the noise in noise in our uh, our economy uh, economy and economic system for example if we if we can simplify it in in the yes and groups we this is Andratum in Sweden as one of the best educational systems in the world and of course without uh, discussion they they didn't apply uh, the the curfew on people why why because they are fully aware of well educated uh, uh, Swed Swedish uh, people who are really mindful mindful and uh, uh, attentive and they know uh, they know what they do why because they are well educated and they have well uh, communicators uh, plus ladies and gentlemen we cannot deny that uh, United States um, we, we can see some sorts of rebel in many countries such as Italy, uh, United States of America, sometimes Canada, yes. Why? Because maybe uh, we have to see the, the, the causes. Maybe the media didn't, didn't, didn't communicate the crisis very well through its uh, media platform. This is a point. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, prioritizing the economy of model development is, uh, let's say, the principle a pillar which can uh, uh, allow us or enable us to to counter or to fend off every pandemic coming up for example japan because it, it, uh, they are the third uh, the third powerful economic uh, power in the world they occupied more than 900 billion dollar to uh, to yes to help the entrepreneurs and the corporations who had who had uh, losses during the crisis. And thank you very much for giving me the word. Thank you very much, Wazani. I, I get that this is a very interesting debate and we would all like to um, talk a little bit more and answer the, the, the remaining questions. But I think that we have to wrap up now. And Tony has to go. And I would like to see if he has anything more to add, maybe. Let me, let me just really quickly guys congratulate you all on a brilliant debate fantastically moderated by fatima it's great to see and hear so many of you um, who i recognize from the finals last year um, when i hear young people like you articulating arguments around the future of Morocco, even as an outsider, it fills me with confidence about the future of your country, um, provided young people are given a platform to share their views. Um, the future of this country is very bright. In the middle of this debate, I had a call from Dr. Driss Wawicha, and I have to call him back in a moment, your Minister for Higher Education. Um, and I told him, I can't take your call because I'm engrossed in a lively debate involving more than 40 young people about Morocco's new development model. So thank you very much. Um, it's been fascinating. I have to keep reminding myself as well that you're all debating in either your second, third, or fourth language, which makes it even more remarkable. So thank you very much. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy, you and your families and your loved ones. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. And uh, thank you to our dear debaters and uh, our audience and everybody that took the time to actually come here and be with us today. Um, I have extremely enjoyed this debate and hopefully we will have the opportunity to meet again very soon. Um, thank you. Stay safe and uh, see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Thank you so Bye -bye. much. Thank you.